Hello, I'm standing here in front of the new dressing rooms with Father Crimmin, Father Jerry Crimmin, who is a parish priest in Kilmichael. Father, I think you've worked a bit of a miracle as regards the weather today. I did, Joe. Uh, fellas were kind of losing faith me there in the week. They thought I couldn't do it, but it pulled it off. Thanks be to God for the weather. Thanks be to God for the fine weather. It makes an awful difference, especially since we're all evening and a long, a long programme. There makes the big, a there's a big programme and hopefully all will go well. Um, the new dressing rooms are looking extremely well, aren't they? Fantastic, absolutely marvellous. This is something you know, that we dreamt of here in the, in the parish, from the parish point of view, from the sporting point of view, for the last 50 years nearly, certainly 30 years of my time. We always wish that. It is huge, massive, very, very comprehensive and very useful, very handy. And Father, isn't it a grand example of community spirit and a community working together? It is indeed. It is, I've seen the last few years here, every single person was above this one way or the other, financially and putting work into it and selling the tickets and everybody was involved to a very high extent. The whole, so, so many people into it, not just a committee, but a whole swath of people. Everybody, one way or the other, has something to do with it. Yeah. And Father, in these recessionary times, um, I think a special tribute has to be given to the Development Committee for organising, for getting the finance and for the building of this wonderful new structure. This, they, had, they, had the hard, they had the hard part and you say it wasn't the best time to go at it, uh, but they made it, they did it, they did it and we know it says, you know, the effort that went into the tide that was put into it uh, and only for everybody being there and pushing behind it, it would have failed, like many more things failed before, it would have failed but they were great, marvellous. And Father Crimmon, this is your second time in the parish of Kilmichael. Have you seen many changes, development-wise, since your previous time here? Oh God, I have. I was here as a curate from 1980 to 86. And anybody that remembers the 80s can remember what a, what a miserable year time there was, what a miserable decade most there was. There was high unemployment, high taxes, poor facilities, immigration was massive. This parish was one of the worst hit because we had... Uh, all the young people were going away, maybe maybe not abroad, but they were going to Cork, going to Dublin. There was there was nothing in the parish for them. Uh, and that time now, in fairness, if I'd said, you know, 30 years time, I'd have said there'd be no parish there, not in mind. You know, schools were closing and farms were being kind of emptied and that sort of thing. Uh, and to come back now and find a growing population from the last six years I've here now again, uh, to find the population going back up, everything booming, it's, it's marvellous. It is absolutely fantastic. And as we said, a bit of community spirit, a bit of enthusiasm, goes a long, long way. Great community spirit, great, and a big help to that is the GA. The fact that we have, and I often said it, we have one GA club in the whole parish, and we're lucky that way. Everybody is, well, they're interested in GA, like myself, I have no interest in games much at all, but whoever they are, wherever they are, no matter how far away they're from in the at the age of the parish, wherever they are, they are under the one flag, J wise and that's a help for parish and for parochial and you know for for community and church things as well. You know that we're, that we're one one parish, one people. It means an awful lot. Well said, Father Jory Crimmon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. But I, I was development officer, youth officer, and development officer. Now, so standing beside me here, I have Jim Murphy, who is a native of the parish of Kilmichael, and he has given wonderful service both to Musgrave to the Cork County Board in many, many different official capacities. Jim, are you proud of Kilmichael today? Absolutely, it is a great day for the parish. You can already see the surroundings here with the beautiful pitches and the beautiful pavilion. And to see the young people down on our left playing, hurling, I think. And uh, it's fantastic, to see, particularly to see the game of hurling being played here in Kilmichael. Where when I was growing up here many years ago now, it was a traditionally football area, but now hurling has taken on and that's a great thing. It's always nice to see the young people involved in any capacity. Well, you see, old phobies like me, Joe, can go on forever. And if we have, in, in, the, in, the, in the Gaelic Athletic Association, if we don't, uh, encourage the youth and bring them along to take over from us fellas. As I say, as we're getting older, then the association will die. But that will never happen because there are great young people in every parish in this county and in every parish in the country. And I have no doubt, but this great association will continue well into the next centuries and centuries after that. Jim, do you think the GAA is stronger now than when you started? I do. I do because there are more people involved. Before, uh, the young fellow in the house just played and the parents, I, I don't think, would even go to see them playing. Now, everybody in the household, particularly the women, are going and involved in the association and that's a great thing. It's a good thing. It's a great thing, yeah. 
and Kilmichael, of course, at the moment. We're sort of, I suppose, in a valley period, but we have great hopes for the future. We won a county last year, and this has to give us a bit of strength going forward. Yes, won a county on the 14 hurling, and, and, it, and it coincided with the, the county board draw was here that evening. And uh, I, I was in the happy position to be able to present the trophy here officially to the chairman of the under-14 team that won the county that evening. And that gave me great joy. There's no doubt about it. A proud moment for a Kilmichael man. Absolutely, Joe. Jim. Thank you so much, Jim Murphy. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks, thanks, sir. I'm standing here beside John Crean, also a native of Kilmichael, now living in Abulug. John, a proud day for you. Absolutely. Marvellous day. Great day for Kilmichael, great day for the club, great day for the parish, and a great day for the GA. John, how many years ago is it since you left Kilmichael now? Uh, I left Kilmichael in 1972. And you've seen many, many changes here since then? So, absolutely. There was no pitch in that time. Only different pitches down in um, Kelhurst, down in, in, um, there near the factory. And there used to be Jolly Rairn's pitch before that. Yeah, up the Bog Road and uh, Shawnee Daly's in Kulderahi. And no, the, the, in that time the moves were being made for to purchase this pitch out here. And Dennis Hargan, Lot of him, and Dan O'Keefe, I'd say, were the two main driving forces behind that at that time. A sign of a, so a strong community spirit, John. Absolutely, absolutely. No and wonderful to see. Absolutely, yeah. It is great, it is great, and it is a real sign of progress. And we, we, we look forward to the next 50 years again and more and more success for Kilmichael and Cork. I won't talk about the next 50 years, no. We'll, we'll take it one, like the song one day at a time, no, I think, yeah, yeah. John, thank you very much indeed. Bye-bye. Thank you. I'm standing here now with William Buckley, um, chairman of the Dripsy Football Club, GA Club, originally from Kilmurray, but now the secretary of the Musgrave Board. William, a good day for Cork, a good day for Kilmichael. Great day for Kilmichael, uh, Joe. Um, fabulous day in a fabulous building here. Um, uh, Kilmichael are one of the progressive clubs though in Mick Cork, and uh, it's, it's great to see him with this new building, and uh, hopefully we'll see more Kilmichael teams going ahead this year in the in Mick Cork ch championships. Are you hopeful for the future, Willie? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the Jays has been around for years and years, and it, it's been part and parcel of uh, the... Uh, of uh, Ireland and uh, the communities at large within the Cork and lo local areas. So again, it, it will stay always within, within uh, the community, you know. Do you think it's getting stronger or is it kind of stagnant or is it, is it weakening? Oh, absolutely. It, it, it's going from strength to strength and you can see here where the, the community effort that was building, building this uh, fabulous building here, the, the money that was raised within, within the community and the uh, G it's if it's growing stronger and stronger. And William, thank you so much for those kind words and enjoy your day. Thanks very much and uh, best of luck to Kilmichael. Thank you. thank you. I'm standing here now with some of the greats of Kilmichael teams of the past. Dinny Manny, Don Lehan, Dinny a proud day for Kilmichael. My God it is, I never thought I'd see it. If we had a good football team now to be the makings of us, wouldn't it? <laughs> and do <laughs> Donald, you're also proud. Yeah, that's right, that's right. A good football team like Dini says now would be the ideal. Well, hopefully that'll come. We have all the structures in place now. All we need now is the team, and that's on the way after Winnie County last year. It is a great credit to the club, I'll tell you this much now. There's a lot of hard work on into this place, and it is a great credit to him. What more can I say? You would agree, Donald? I would agree, I would agree with Dini, yeah. I suppose, in the words of Obama, it's Fader Ling. Good year, Rock. Dini and Donald, thank you very much indeed. One of the most striking features of the new dressing rooms here in Kilmichael is the wonderful mural on the wall behind us here. And it was painted by a very well-known artist called Annie Conroy. Annie, you're very welcome. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you. How long did it take you to do it? Uh, well, I started it before the weather got really cold. And then um, I had a bit of problem because the wet the paint wouldn't dry so it all washed down the wall and then I had to start again um, but so I'm not really sure how long it took but it was a labor of love it was absolutely a labor of love yeah it was a really lovely job it was a lovely job well it looks absolutely splendid and it really adds to the facade of these lovely new dressing rooms they're fantastic aren't they the dressing rooms they're just gorgeous it's a beautiful building you know, all done with um, all these people raising funds. I just think it's fantastic. Annie, you're not a native of Kilmichael. Where have you come from? 
Uh, I live in Cool Mountain, uh, but I was originally born in England. My dad's from Timberleague. So you're half Cork at least, and nearly Kilmichael at this stage. I'm nearly Kilmichael. I work here more than I work anywhere else. So, so. Annie Conroy, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Oh, yeah. But I have one last call there for any more of the 1960 junior football team or anyone belong to to the any player who is maybe is able to come for some reason or other. Would they, would they take their seats there in the front seat? Don't knock him now. Just a, another announcement there, would the, all the Blitz teams, would they get into their positions for the Guard of Honour? All the, all the under 12 Blitz teams, would you all be in your position? ...between Cork A and Cork B. At half time in the match, we have the final of the Blitz. We are already had the GA opening, but... This seems to be a lot of interest in it anyway. And also that the road play match is on the So there's a full program ahead. And without further ado, I hand you over to our club chairman, Chairman Solieri. Good luck. How about Tom's on the party? He got the name for the parking clearly. Reverend Father, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, to give you a big head of what we are here this evening. Sorry, Father, please, for the start. Back in the early 2000, this was a dream to have a second playing field on a modern clubhouse. And despite the worst recession, we still got achieved that dream. It got said that we were both lucky and unlucky. Lucky in the sense that we got the fundraising good, done during the good times. And the negative was that we were refused money from the Sports Council, which is Lotto grant money, if you want to call it another thing. But with the help of Kilmichael people, we managed to finish the building, and you must agree it's all to a fantastic standard. All during this project, we helped 
We got fantastic help from the entire parish, both with fundraising and during the past few months, the amount of help we received to enable us to finish the club house has been fantastic. I would just make reference to the Johnstone Harvest Committee this morning. They put up a marquee on the very difficult, windy and conditions, and I would just like to thank them specifically for that. Volunteer, thank you. <laughs> Volunteering is, um, is the name of the game at the GA, and we certainly used it in the last month for the people of the parish. To both committees whom undertook the task of the playing field and the clubhouse, we thank them for finishing both on time and on budget. To our main contractor for the clubhouse, Drone Lee Construction Bantry, on the management of Damien O'Neill and his staff, we would like to thank you for your excellent work. It was a pleasure to do business with you, and of course, thanks to his wonderful subcontractors. To John Murphy Kilmore Bannon for the construction of the pitch, it is credit to you and your team that we now have a Crow Park size pitch to play our national games. To Martin and Peter for the maintenance of our pitches, and into the marvelous David Carryman, so busy getting the start ready for the All Ireland champions. <laughs> Today we welcome the All Ireland champions of 2010 and with the help of God 2011. It is not very often you get over 20 All Ireland season medal holders playing on the same pitch on the same night. It is an honour to have such a fantastic set of players. To Conor Conahan, his selectors and his background staff, thank you very much for your cooperation in the last few weeks. And finally, my thanks to Dermot Foley and his committee, who did the official opening and did a fantastic job. I would like to give you a round of applause for Dermot and his committee. And I make other, one other thank you, and that was to Eileen Cotter, for an absolute Trojan amount of work she did in getting the official program done today. Thank you, Eileen. <laughs> Maradot Obama during the week is Father Ling. Yes, we can. We can now say, Tom Bertha Dante, the job is done. Thank you all and enjoy your stay. <laughs> Next person to speak is Pat Malone of the Musgrave Board. And I would like to send our best wishes to JJ Long, who had great interest here in this parish. Unfortunately, he had the accident on be able to attend here today, and we wish him well. Right, Pat. Reverend Father, Mr. Chairman, Chairman of the County Board, and on behalf of the Musgrave Board, uh, it is an honour for me to stand up here today on this auspicious occasion. But before I suppose I say anything, I should as well refer to the chairman of the division because I would pre much prefer to be sitting down the seats there, cracking jokes and standing up here. And I want to say that uh, JJ most certainly was looking forward to the opening of this facility because he had discussed it with me on a number of occasions. And I know as well that he has family in this club area and we all hope and pray that in the not-too-distant future that he'll make a full recovery and be back with us. <laughs> On behalf of the board and my fellow officers and the clubs of the division, I have to say that today is a fantastic occasion for the Kilmichael Club. Two playing fields, a massive pavilion, and as Seamus has already said, done a bit unlucky at the end of the day that there was no, as we call it, government money available. But nevertheless, it proved that the, the people of the parish, who both within and without, came to the rescue to get them off of the ground. I would also like to pay a tribute to the club itself and the people who have carried the flag over the years for the effort they have put in in keeping the GA alive in this part of the county. It's a club with a proud football tradition, but in recent years they have made an endeavour to establish themselves as a holding club as well and have been reasonably successful in that up to the present time. I would also like, on behalf of the board, to thank the various people from this area 
who have helped the board and have been involved with the board over the years. The referees, board delegates and people who have uh, played their part as selectors of the Muskie hurling team, uh, football teams. Uh, I am certainly not into long speeches, uh, because there are a number of other speakers. Again, on behalf of the, the board and its officers, I want to thank the club for the kind of invitation extended to us here this evening and to wish Ken Michael, uh, uh, hurling and football club, the best of luck in the future and to thank them again for their invitation. Thanks very much. I would now like to call on uh, Jory O'Sullivan, Chairman of Cork County Board. It is a great honour and privilege for me to be here with my fellow officers this evening and the very special occasion for the Kilmichael GA Club. The facilities that you have that you are opening here this evening are an absolute credit to everybody concerned and I would like on behalf of the board first of all to congratulate your officers and everybody involved from the very beginning to, to bring it to the condition that it is in today. Everybody knows nothing happens without hard work and I know that those people have worked long and tirelessly and extremely hard to bring it to the condition that it is in today and I think Everybody involved in the club, including you, the supporters, all over the community who have contributed financially and otherwise, can all take a great um, deal of confidence and credit for what you have produced here this afternoon. It is also nice to see the men of 1960 here uh, with us this evening, the mighty men of 1960 who brought honour to your club. And on occasions like this, it is great to remember people such as those and it is also wonderful to see the young people here this evening who will be the main beneficiaries for the foreseeable future of these facilities here. So it is nice to have a mixture, it was a, one wouldn't be there without the other. Um, also here this evening we have the Sam Maguire Cup and the National Football League um, Cup. Um, that of course is thanks to all wonderful, wonderful footballers who will be performing here later on this evening. But neither of those trophies would be present here in our county were it not for the work of clubs such as Kilmichael and hundreds of other clubs like you around the county. It is the work that is done by the clubs, providing the facilities, looking after the players and producing the players and the stars of the future. That is what has Cork uh, where it is in both holding and football. And please God, we will um, get a victory over our friends in Tipperary tomorrow and Tullus as well. But, well they say it is thanks to the work, the work being put in by people in clubs such as Kilmichael and all over the county that we are as successful as we are. Um, finally, you can be very, very proud of everything you have achieved. As your chairman has said, the job is done. Now enjoy it and make full use of it. And I wish you every success in the future. Let me tomorrow. Thanks, John. Uh, I would now like to call on John O'Sullivan of the ESB uh, who played no small part in providing this facility, making it available to Kilmichael. I'll ask him to say a few words to you. Mr. President, Vice President, Chairman, Reverend Father, officers and members of the club, on behalf of the ASB, I would like to thank you for my invitation here today to the official opening of this new Kilmichael GA Sports Complex. The ASB is very supportive of local communities and, in their, and their efforts to provide sporting opportunities for the youth. The ASB has a very good working relationship with your chairman, Seamus O'Leary, and his very hard working committee, and is delighted to see the fruits of your hard work realised today with the official opening of this fine facility. I hope that this clubhouse will encourage new membership and lead to many successful campaigns on the field of play in the years ahead. Again, best wishes on behalf of the ESP. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Uh, I would now like to call on Dermot Foley, Chairman of the Organising Committee, who has put in an awful lot of work 
and making this possible this evening. Uh, I know you do that much. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all here today. Today is a proud day for the club with the opening of our new complex. This all started about five years ago when a building committee was formed to look at the building of a new clubhouse. And when, they, when it progressed to hitting the highways and byways in 2007-2008, selling tickets in our development draw, this was the day that we all eagerly looked forward to. I want to thank everyone involved in that process, and especially to all the ticket sellers that knocked on doors all over the county, and to all who helped in progressing the project from there. What we see here today is a tribute to you all, and is something that this parish can be really proud of. Today is the realisation of a dream for the club, and I would ask you to put your hands together as a token of appreciation to all those who have made it happen. I would like to pay a special tribute to our club officers and our official opening committee who have worked tirelessly over the last three months in preparing for this day. And also a special thanks to everyone who have helped in any way in putting this day together. And it was in particular to our Lord above for giving us a dry day. <laughs> Today, also, we are launching a commemorative book, and I would like to pay a special tribute to Eileen Cotter and her hard-working committee who have put this publication together, and I think they also deserve a special round of applause. <laughs> this book pieces together the history of the club, with a lot of old photographs, etc., and I would strongly encourage you to purchase a copy which is available at 10 euros. At the back of this book is a page for autographs, etc. And I believe that if you avail of autographs from our stars here today, it could make a very nice gift, especially for those who cannot be with us. I want especially to thank the ESB for their cooperation in the continued lease of these grounds. And I ask you also to give them a special round of applause. It's nice to see them represented here today. I want especially to thank the Cox Senior Footballers for gracing us with their presence. And I want to thank Selector Jory O'Sullivan for helping make this happen. Our appreciation also to Conor Cunahan for performing the open, official opening ceremony. Or opening. I, would like, I would like to wish him the very best in 2011 in their quest to keep Sam at Leaside where he belongs. I ask you to give them a round of applause. Right. I now hope that you all enjoy your day and to finish with my few words of Irish, Gurev Amila Mahabud. Thank you. Well done, Dermot. Uh, I would now like to hand you over to Dennis O'Callaghan. Dennis uh, is part of the organising committee and part of the organising the 1960 football team for, uh, for the presentation. But I hand you over to Dennis. Thank you. Uh, I'll keep it short and sweet. I'd just like to welcome uh, the 1960 lads there. They're looking hale and hearty. So without further ado, I'll ask Frank. Would you come over here, Frank, please? Yeah. Right, when well, I'm calling up the 1960 lads there, would you come up the, the steps here, please? It's a health and safety issue. <laughs> okay, I'll call on uh, John Joe Riley, first of all, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Timmy Foley. Yeah. Um, Jack Lynch.
Maar het voor de de ding de weer Paddy voor hem. Paddy was a star of the club over the years. Don't only hand. Ik ben hier maar weer. Ik ben hier Ian Murphy. The name is going to be a friend. The name is good. Job show on top of winter mark. August, I saw Pobble Day, Gilly Hill, Mogwaya Steve, and uh, I'm glad to have a great doing. Just my congratulations to Jay before I uh, ask him to join me in prayer, and my thanks to them for what they are doing in uh, association with so many more people to uh, bind the, po the people of, of, of Kilmichael, the community, together. Grieve each mercy in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God has given us our physical powers in order that we may serve Him joyously, help one another, and by discipline and accord with the law of God, make our body fit for every good work. God therefore approves of recreation for the relaxation of the mind and the exercise of the body. Care of our bodies fosters mental well being, and we more readily establish friendly and affable relations with other people. Which is the word of God, first that St. Paul to Corinthians, St. Paul spoke about. He said, Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the prize? Run so as to win. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we, are, we win an imperishable one. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. No, I drive my body and I train it. I fear that. Having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. 
few prayers of the faithful, my Lord Jesus, strengthens our, Lord Jesus, our joy and our strength, calls us to himself. We pray, Lord, you are the life of all those who by your blood. Lord, hear us. You are the strength of the weak and the prize of the strong. Be with us always in all we do. Lord, hear us. We send your spirit to be the comforter who sustains us. We ask you then to help us in all our needs. Lord, hear us. We pray for all our welfare. We pray for our special needs. We pray particularly for J.J. Long in his illness and for all those whom we ourselves wish to pray for. Lord, hear us. Let us remember the souls of those who have died our past uh, members, all those who have played a part in the GA in, uh, in all the years gone by since its foundation here in Michael. May they be joined the eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us. So the prayer of blessing. Lord, we sing your praise without ceasing. You rule over all things with wonderful order. You temper the cares and burdens of our toil. And by giving us rest and healthy, rec and healthy recreation, you refresh our weary bodies and minds. We ask in your kindness that this place and facilities will contribute to leisure activities that renew the spirit and strengthen the mind and body. Grant that all who meet here may find the enrichment of companionship and together offer you the praise that is due as we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. So if here's your final blessing. May God, who brings light to our minds and strength in our bodies, guide us in all we do so that each day we may find gladness and friendship through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Uh, thanks, Father Grimmins. Uh, we now call on Connor, Connor Cohen, manager of the cross scene of football time, the work that you need for our new cross of the world. 15 minutes left, Bruno. I'm um, President, Chairperson, uh, Reverend Fathers, guests, um, I'm very honoured to be asked along here today to perform the official opening of what is a truly magnificent complex. You know, I suppose the GA is in a very strong, healthy state when you can see a small community like this that can provide facilities like this for their players going forward. It's a very proud day, I'm sure, for everyone in the parish, and I'm sure there are many people who have gone past who must be looking down now, smiling and feeling very proud. So, you know, I, I won't go any further into speeches, but wish you well in the future, and I'll now try and perform the official opening, but well done to everyone. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ja, I'm here now with Seamus O'Leary, the chairman of the Kilmichael GA Club. Seamus, you must be a proud man today. Yeah, very proud man indeed. Thank God the weather held out for us. We have a fantastic achievement done in the last 10 years here now with a new pitch and a new dressing room. So all we need now is good teams and they have the conditions to do it. And Seamus, the fact that Kilmichael won a county minor last year, that must bode well for the future. Yeah, that is a fantastic achievement for the club, our first minor title ever, even though we have to join with our neighbours in Valera this year as Western Gales due to low numbers in under, 60, under 15, 16 and minor. But, and they are going very well in the league as well. And they're playing 15 aside football, I think, which is the most important thing. Seamus, is today your proudest day as chairman of Kilmichael GA Club? Well, it has to be. I mean, just to see the facilities here of well over half a million gone into full production now, and it is an absolute fantastic centre. Two playing pitches, two and a half playing pitches. Absolutely fantastic. Proudest day of my life. As you said, quite a goal, Seamus, is Faderling. And it just shows when a group of people get together who are enthusiastic and willing, the sky's the limit. Oh, the sky's the limit. I mean, the community spirit here with the last month is unbelievable. I even said in my address, Johnstown Harvest Committee came this morning, put up a marquee. Despite all windy conditions, they went through some severe trouble to get it going, but they got there. And we had everyone and anyone, absolutely members, people that had no association at all with GE, and they're doing everything and anything for us. And we thank them very much. Well done, Seamus. With those words, we thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Bye bye now, and best of luck for the year. Thank you. I'm here with Conor Coonan, the probably one of the most successful managers of any Cork team. Um, going for a double double, unheard of. Connor, you must be a proud man to be leading this wonderful bunch of players. Uh, look, we were quite fortunate to have such a group of players, but you know, I suppose we're as good as our next game, and you know, that's coming now next weekend against Waterford, so you know, we have to prepare diligently for that and, and be ready for the challenge that they'll present. Some of the tackles there today, they were bordering on the over physical. Is this the way you train all the time? They, they all talk about Kilkenny and their training games. Is it the same with Cork? I don't know, I suppose we like to have intensity, you know, whether it's in A versus B or inside in training ground or what, I think it prepares us well for championship and you need to try and match that intensity in training and maybe today was, was somewhere like that, I didn't think maybe it was that bad. It looked bad to us hurlers on the ditch or footballers on the ditch. Right, right, well, maybe, maybe you're getting soft or something or someone is getting soft but I know look, it's a good contest and I think everyone is out there to try and make an impression and that's the way you want it. Last year was a tough year. He got there by the skin of your teeth in a couple of games, against Limerick in particular and against Dublin in the semi-final. But he showed that tremendous resolve that I think is, is newfound. Would you agree with that? 
I yeah, sure, suppose these lads have been through a lot, you know, they've been through a lot of tough days where things didn't work out for them and I suppose that helps build the resolve and, you know, as you said last year, came through a lot of tough battles by a point or two, but, you know, that just goes to show how tight the overall situation is and, you know, for us now we're up there to be knocked at by every team and, uh, you know, that brings its own pressure and that sort of thing, so we have to try and up our standards now to try and stay ahead. He looked very well now today, I must say, uh, lean and hungry and ready for anything. Yeah, but I suppose, you know, A versus B challenge games, you know, there's no no replacement for actual championship football and, you know, the real tests lie ahead and, and as I said, we'll just take that one step at a time and it, that's Waterford in a week's time. Connor, you last two to win two yourself. Um, could the same thing be, could history be repeating itself? Actually, you know, I suppose we won't look that far down the line. As I said, we'll look as far as Waterford now, and if, you know, hopefully we can get over that one, you know, but it's dangerous business to be looking too far ahead. I totally agree. You can never count your chickens before they're hatched. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, sport is so competitive years ago. You know, there was a major gap in standards between teams, but no, you know, there's eight or ten teams could, could win a, a, an All Ireland in any year. Connor, all we can say in conclusion is the very best of luck to you and your team. The very best for 2011 and I hope you retain Sam. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thanks. Here I am with Liam Cotter, um, a member of the committee of Kilmichael GA and one of the hardest working members of that. Liam, a proud day in the history of Kilmichael. Yeah. Uh, very proud day, Joe. Uh, great day for the club. Uh, I suppose it is something we've been striving for for many years at this stage to provide facilities for our players and for the community like we have here today. Uh, but there was something that started way back in uh, 2001, I suppose, uh, when we the club decided that we'd uh, have a second playing field. And uh, that was developed during 2003, 2004. We began playing in 2004. And uh, then there was a building committee set up in uh, 2006. And uh, this is the result we have here today. And it's a great day for the club. Uh, I would hope that uh, with all the investment, there's about €600,000 spent by the club in, since 2002 and all this development. And I just, I, I'm sure it will be money well spent and that the club will reap the rewards. So, It's the culmination of a dream. It is indeed, Joe, yeah, culmination of a dream. Uh, uh, we had, uh, our, the previous dressing rooms had served us very well. Uh, they were a great credit to the people before us that put them there. And, uh, but... The time had come when we had to move on, and uh, no, today is the day now, and uh, our dream is realised. It's a tribute to the standing of Kilmichael GA that Conor Coonan brought a very, very strong team here today to play the A's versus the B's, and we're just saying to Conor that some of the tackles were quite hard, so it's a tribute to the, the hard work of the Kilmichael committee to get them here. Yeah, indeed it is, and as I said, the planning for this day started way back in January of this year. Uh, as you know, it is chaired by, it was chaired by Dermot Foley. The club appointed him as the chairman of the organising committee. He, he and his committee have done a fantastic job. Uh, I know that uh, all this, as I said, had to be planned very early in the year. And it is great that uh, Conor Conan and the uh, Cox selectors saw fit uh, to play this uh, game here today. Uh, f uh, the full panel were here, I believe. Uh, full, full panel. And as I say, it was a very competitive game, very entertaining game by what I hear. I didn't get to see much of it, but uh, it is, you're quite right, yeah, to the tribute of the club, I suppose, yet. Yeah. Liam, a great day in the annals of Kilmichael. Very well done to you and your fellow troopers, and every success for the year ahead. Yeah. Thanks very much, Joe. Thanks. Here I am with uh, Dermot Foley and Eileen Cotter, two of the hard-working members of the committee who were responsible for this very successful day. Eileen, culmination of a dream. It's a great day, mighty um, turnout, and it's great to see everything, fine day and everything happy, everyone happy. And Dermot, the planning for this didn't just happen today. You must be planning this for a long, long time. Well, it was, we're planning this with um, three months. I was, we're really planning this day with the last, since 2007, since we've been selling tickets on the road, since we decided to go ahead with this building. <coughs> There was a big um, effort made, people from even outside the GA club brought in, people from all different sides of the community, not only GA members went out selling tickets. They travelled the highways and byways of Cork County. Um, we travelled from, I suppose, Goaline, up as far as Grenade, the right down into the city, even back into Kerry. 
Um, <coughs> I suppose you could say the, 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 day, the planning started at that stage. <laughs> and Eileen, this publication that I have in my hand here, that took a lot of time. I suppose many, many hours went into it, but um, lo, we got great support from um, sponsors. People came forth with photographs, gave articles, everyone rode in behind, and this is the finished product, so it's great. It's a great day for it. Joe, jo, I would like to pay a special tribute here to, um, to Eileen and Charles, John Carroll and Miriam and Madeline, uh, Madeline O'Brien. Was, they put a huge amount of work into this book. They spent hours and hours researching, putting the whole articles together, getting the photographs ready and um, bringing it to, to, to where it is today. A huge thank you to Terry Lee and her team. Well said, Dermot, and thanks to Dermot and Eileen and every success for the year ahead. Thank you very much. I'm standing here now with Dennis O'Callaghan, who organised the regrouping of the 1960 winning Mid Cork Kilmichael team. Dennis, was it hard work to get them all together? Not really, no, no. Um, well, unfortunately, uh, uh, Joe, some of them, obviously, there's, I think there was three of them, uh, not with us anymore, like they're dead, obviously. So, uh, but other than that, like uh, everybody that was able to come came. There was people, you know, had work commitments and so on and so forth, but there was about 12, I'd say 12 or 13, which was great, like, you know, so I was delighted, and they were, they were thrilled, I was, I was up with them then, I was having a meal while ago, and they were absolutely thrilled to, to be here on this great occasion, you know. I suppose it's nice to be recognised. Oh, yeah, absolutely, of course, I mean, like, these people, like, the, some of them actually, by 1960, like, some of them actually had won, I don't know, was it, was it four mid-cock medals, you know, and there was a good share of brothers and things like that, you know, so, like, it was great, like, they had, they had a great get-together, and they hoped to meet again now, like, in, um, in, I would say, in 2013, because uh, they, a lot of them were on the 1963 team uh, that won Emil Cork as well. So that would be the 15th anniversary of that would be, is it 2013, is it? Yeah. So they're looking forward to that. They're doing great for And the, the way they got back up on the stage there today was impressive. <laughs> well, I mean, like, look, they're, 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 some of them know Arshavi on for eight years of age. Like, they're, they're, I tell you, they're, they're, in, they're in good nick, in fairness to them, you know. So it's great, fantastic, yeah. It was a great idea and a great tribute. Dennis, congratulations. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks. I'm standing here beside Graham Canty, proud captain of the Cork Footballers. Graham, you're very welcome to Kilmichael. Thanks very much. Delighted to be here. Um, you've uh, you've a fine setup, low here. I was here only a short few years ago, and there was none of this clubhouse or the second pitch or a bit. So there's obviously great community spirit. You've obviously everyone's put their shoulder to the wheel, and you know, when everyone's focused on the one thing, it's it's amazing what a what a small community can do. You look very trim and fit there today, Graham. I'm sure you're putting the hard work in. Yeah, we're we're training hard. You know, um, the lads have put in a good league. I missed most of that just due to injury, but I've been doing my own bit. But um, everyone's in good shape. You know, we've we've clear under our belt, and we're looking forward to what for on Sunday week. And Graham, you're no stranger to Kilmichael. No, um, my father's from Kilmichael. My grandmother's only over the road there, and my uncle's still living here, Paddy. So um, I'm nearly treated as a local around here. And of course, your uncle Jim played a lot of football with Kilmichael, and so did Paddy. That's right, yeah, that's right. You know, I'm lucky enough to have, to have uh, people in the area, and you know, it's just, it's just nice to kind of come home, I suppose. You know, to to a certain extent. But um, you know, it's, it's great to see the facilities here that that um that have been developed over the last number of years. Um, you know, like that they're able to host something like this, and even when we came down here, like the people were people were even saying it's, it's just great to see people out hurling and footballing, all the young kids out there, like you know, just enjoying themselves and playing the blitzes and the hurling football. Is, you know, it is mighty to see. Graham, you had a hard year last year. You came through by the skin of your teeth in a couple of games in particular. I'm sure this year won't be any different. No, no, I don't think so. Um, you know, it's only it's only small margins in it. Um, last year the margins went with us, and there was a lot of hard work behind it. But um, you know, we, we put in the same hard work and even a small bit more. And if the margins go with us, they do. If they don't, you know, there, there isn't much more you can do. But you know, it, it won't be from the lack of hard work from our point of view. Great scope, Graham Canty, captain of Cork. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Well done, Ned.